Dude, buying reptiles, the coolest thing you'll ever do. Buying green iguanas is right up there with it. One of the awesome things about green iguanas is that they're easy to find. You see them in just about any pet store you go into. They're fairly cheap. And you see these little guys and you're like, oh man, look at that dude. He is awesome. But wait, make sure you consider these five things before you go buying an iguana. Being outside with her, I'm a little nervous because if she hit the ground, she'd be gone. And I don't think I can get up these trees fast enough to, uh, to stop her. So I brought in my, my little helper here, Kendall. So when it comes to buying iguanas, the first thing you need to think about is size. That's right, size. Males sometimes almost push up to seven feet long. But you know what? That's like an extreme. So let's just say five to six feet. <laughs> that is a lot of lizard. That is half body. I mean, of pure muscle, nails, strong jaws. Um, I mean, just their leg muscles alone, uh, uh, just how fast and how powerful they can deliver it. And then half of a tail, which is another thing. It's just a great weapon uh, that they bring as well. Size is huge. So what happens is, like I said before, that little guy that you saw in the, in the pet store has now outgrown aquarium after aquarium, after ferret cage, after dog cage. And next thing you know, you're having to build this awesome palace of an enclosure. So the thing you have to consider is, one is, are you ready for a, a reptile, a powerful dinosaur that is going to get that big and is going to need the room necessary to keep it. Those are just two big things that come along with the size uh, of these guys. She's only pushing probably just shy of three and a half feet. And honestly, she takes up a lot of room. So make sure before you buy that cute little guy you see in that pet store, you know how big they're going to get. And yes, size matters. The second and third reasons you should consider buying an iguana is that they are high maintenance. What she's saying is, is that what I've thought about doing is I'm going to combine two things, okay? They're high maintenance and their food. The reason I do that is because you need to consider this. Their diet, their lighting, they need heat, their enclosure are all things that go into how much of a high maintenance these animals are. Okay, they're herbivores, so therefore they're, they mainly eat plants. Um, we feed her zucchini, squash, carrots, peas, uh, lettuce, kale. I mean, if it's green, we give it to her every day. Thank the Lord I have the wife I have and she doesn't mind meal prepping for this guy. But I'm telling you, it is a lot that goes into it. Their diet needs to consist also of calcium. These guys need so much calcium in their diet for their bones because of them being uh, the, these cold-blooded animals. That's what, uh, honestly, what all reptiles need. These guys just need a higher dose, a higher level of it. Something that you gotta know. How much do I need to put in there? How much do I not? How many times do I feed it with or without calcium? We're having uh, <laughs> technical difficulties at the moment. Hey, we're filming, we're filming. So with these guys being herbivores, they're not eating any meat, so therefore they're not getting any calcium in their diet. So therefore you have to buy powdered calcium that you sprinkle on their food. That's right. Not a lot of people knew that uh, going into getting their reptile that that even existed. So you heard it here. You buy a powder, but the problem is is you gotta know how much you need to put on, how many times a day, and when it comes to reptiles, iguanas, in my personal opinion, require more calcium in their diet than any other reptile I have ever owned. I have a video that'll be coming this week uh, soon on how to keep a healthy iguana that will literally show you guys exactly step for step how on, uh, on how to truly take care of these guys when it comes to their diet. So make sure you subscribe and then hit that bell, that notification button, so that you don't miss it uh, when it comes out. <laughs> she loves it out here. We're out here sweating to death. She's like, oh, this is perfect. Why? Because it's hot and it's humid. So again, the heat. These guys require heat. They're cold blooded, so they need it to be able to regulate their body temperature. The daytime, they're probably gonna need about 80 to 85 to 91 degrees. And on the cold side or at night, they're gonna need probably a 70 to about 78 degrees, 70 to about 78, 79 degrees 
Um, so yes, they are going to need a daytime and a nighttime cycle. I use one of those ceramic heaters uh, that goes into light bulbs. The problem is it doesn't provide the light. So now I need the UVA and the UVB bulbs, which will provide the biological, uh, it helps them with their biological functions, as well as it gives them the nutrients that they need. Because these guys need that vitamin D3 in their body, which is where the big part of the calcium comes into their diet. And I do want to touch on this uh, real quick while we're, while we're talking about that. Um, even though it is extremely important and I'm just barely touching on it, is the humidity aspect of their enclosure. Uh, we missed her two to three times a day because it is hard in a, a custom built enclosure, at least that I have, uh, to keep that humidity right, but you can get an automatic mister as well. So yes, you're going to need three domes or the lamps to hold the ceramic heater, the UVA and the UV bulb, as well as you might even have to get a mister or you gotta make sure that you're just using a spray bottle to mist them down so that they get their humidity right. Ain't that right, girl? So yeah, girl, get that humidity right. Because the humidity, like, like most reptiles, uh, helps with their shedding of the skin, which uh, she's slowly starting to do. Yes, that's why she looks so pretty. All right, so we have size, high maintenance and food now we're going to talk about the damage that these guys can do just in case you know you, you think you're not getting enough out of this video you can click right here and you can see just how powerful in the things that this tail does but while we're talking about it uh, th this tail is literally just pure muscle and they are experts it's like popping a towel uh, how they cock this thing and literally catch you with the tip and it will leave a welt. I mean, it will sting, it will hurt. That is their go-to weapon as far as defense or when they've just had enough. She's actually doing awesome at the moment, so I'm, I'm able to kind of show you guys. So the tail, first thing they do with damage. Next thing, if you can get a closer look here at her feet, okay, she's got these talons as nails. I mean, they are just brutal. We actually just clipped her, so they're not too bad today. Or rather, rather you mean to or not, you can see all the scratches just on my arm alone, and that's with her nails being clipped. Um, but they can. They, they do a lot of damage, rather they mean to or not. The last thing is their bite. Uh, they have a powerful jaw. The problem with their bite is they're so used to grabbing these leaves, and when they bite, they're used to shaking and, and tearing off leaves. So the problem is, is when an iguana bites you, they don't just bite and let go. I mean, they bite and they shake, kind of like, like what a shark does. You know, it's those teeth and they grind it across and um, it, it does a lot of damage. So damage is number four on the list of things to consider before you buy an iguana. She's getting antsy. She's like, hurry up. I want to jump in this tree and be out. All right, so number five on the list, the last thing to consider, their poop and pee okay iguanas poop and pee at the same time <laughs> and when they get this size it is a lot and it leaves an awful mess that you will clean up every day not every other day not once a week every day okay and it is it's a nuisance now there are some fun things that you can do we get her out and <laughs> literally i have to sprint upstairs with her and put her in the bathtub and she does she'll poop in her water um most iguanas especially the ones i've had i'll tell you every single one that i've grown up with and had over about the last 20 years do not like to poop on the the platform that they like to hang on where their heat and their light and everything is um, or where they like to bask so she does she'll get down and at least over to the side and poop down here along the side and it does make it a little easier to clean but it is a mess it is a mess you remember i had the toboggan on there is nothing worse than having an iguana sitting on top of your head and you feel all of that running down the back of your neck down your back it is <laughs> it is an awful experience the other big thing is is that there's salmonella is in their poop so it's just it's just almost like a danger hazard as well especially as you can tell i have i have two kids uh and a family so make sure every time you clean it you really scrub not only the enclosure but your hands but i'm telling you that is just another thing to think about because you know it's not like a dog you can just let them outside to go to the bathroom it is something you will be cleaning up all the time trust me
Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot. And I'm telling you, I love iguanas. They are not great pets. However, if you do get one, I really hope that you consider these five things because they are very important, uh, you know, just to make it easier for you and for them so that they can thrive and, and grow to be beautiful animals. But they're not easy. It is not always fun. You know, she's being great at the moment, but you know, there's some videos. If you jump on the channel, uh, <laughs> you'll see she's being a great sport at the moment, but it's not always like that. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button so that you don't miss anything else when it comes to these uh, beautiful reptiles. And uh, until then, love reptiles, love wildlife, and enjoy your day. See ya.